Hello, welcome to module 61 of NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology part 2. So, in this uh, chapter, we will now study two dimension manifold. For short, we call them surfaces. Later on, you may restrict the word surface for a suitable class of submanifolds of dimension 2 also. So, this chapter is going to be not a very rigorous one, but intended to be a exposition for things to come like motivating you people to study algebraic topology and differential topology and so on. So, manifolds in general later on. So, let us begin the study of surfaces with the good old technique of paper models which everybody uses. So, I begin with an example here which you are familiar with namely in general, in mathematics, we call a cylinder to be any space which looks like x cross an interval, okay, modeled on the most familiar object, namely when x equal to a circle. When x is a circle, circle cross an interval is a typical model for the cylinder that you have studied even in uh, your 10th standard and so on, all, all familiar with uh, physicists and so on. Okay. So, the surface that we have here is you know not general x cross j, but some curve cross interval. So, that is the most general uh, cylinder as such, but if you want real world cylinder, let us stick to the, the classical notion when x itself is a circle. When a circle, it is only up to homeomorphism, therefore, you can take ellipse also, no problem. Okay. So, when you take circle cross j, j is an interval its boundary will be circle cross boundary of j okay, at two different uh, ends. For example, if j is just 0 cross 0 to 1 the closed interval, then c cross 0 and c cross 1 are the boundaries. Okay, so, all these things can be verified. The point is I want to use a paper model for this one namely I start with a rectangular piece which is represent which is a representative of you know the other way around now we we want the topology namely 0 1 cross 0 1 which represents the paper but we were looking at modeling so you have to take a uh, piece of paper which represents 0 1 cross 0 1 the plane uh, topological space okay and then what we are going to do to produce one factor as a circle on the one factor namely 0 comma s will be identified with 1 comma s okay where s c is varying over the second factor 0 comma 1 so on this first factor the end points are identified 0 and 1 so that i have to do for every s inside the second factor namely 0 comma 1 here Okay, so, that is the identification, so very straightforward identification which gives you a cylinder, this much we have already known. On the other hand, while identifying, if I just turn around oh, the two sides, namely here I have this 0 cross the entire 0 cross uh, 0 1 here, the second one is 1 cross 0 1, instead of s going to s. I twist around namely s going to 1 minus s. Okay, so, 0 comma s is identified with 1 comma 1 minus s, then what I get is the so called Mobius band. Okay, we have 
you must have studied or if you haven't you should do that namely you know actually work it out and see that they are quite different objects whatever you want to say is a quite different object they are you know even in the layman's uh, language so what are the different topological aspects of them that itself is an interesting study so this you must have done if you have done it we can do it at some other time there's no problem so here is the way the you know this is the cylinder and the mobius band are represented diagrammatically so we take this is uh, model here namely this is 0 1 cross 0 1 there is no price for keeping the length same there is no need and then you identify this edge with this edge as the arrow is indicated the the arrow is indicating how you are going from one to the other here the arrows are reversed you see this is going to give you the mobius band of course when you actually identify it the this one will give you the annulus which is equivalent to a cylinder and that will give you uh, some surface like this where it will be a twist here which is not a part of the plane here i have deliberately shown it as subspace of the plane itself which is possible for the cylinder which is same thing as an annulus but this cannot be there will be some crossing over so this will actually hang around in the third dimension so that is a mobius band all right so these are the paper schemes so you just indicate this way you have to understand that these two edges are identified so that is the meaning of paper scheme right so with a piece of paper you can actually perform this also so that is the whole idea okay but there is other things also which you have studied in your uh, part 1 namely the torus and the klein bottle the torus is got by in the first model here namely again the same uh, piece of paper rectangular piece of paper the opposite sides here are identified this and this the same orientation like that here also same orientation okay whereas in the klein bottle one pair is identified with the same orientation whereas the other one there is a twist the orientation is reversed here so this is this will give you klein bottle and this will give you the torus now if you use a paper you cannot actually perform this torus forget about klein bottle klein bottle even with a rubber sheet you cannot for perform inside r3 but this one if you have a rubber sheet you can perform okay like a, a cycle tube but if you have a paper of course one side you can identify these two or you can identify these two to get a cylinder once you have got a cylinder you can't bend it to identify the two circles there because there is some rigidity with the paper also you see it will crumple right it will not be represent a embedded uh, object as you represent so for that we will have to do different tricks but so finally what i want to say is you know the actual the so called experiments that i am going to perform here they are partly experiments which can be performed the rest of them you have to remain only thought experiment okay so that is what uh, you know thanks to the world uh, you know this thought experiment is a world introduced by einstein i think so this is what you can do finally all right now let me recall that you have also defined uh, of course the the standard sphere s2 there is no need to define we have already verified that it's a surface right all sn contained inside rn plus 1 they are all n dimension manifolds that we have seen but now i am going to give you i am going to recall that you have also defined the projective spaces in particular the projective space of dimension 2 p2 which can be obtained as a quotient of s2 
by taking the action namely x going to minus x that is the z2 action and go modulo that action means identify x with minus x for each x so that is that will give you the, uh, the projective space let we can use this notation q from s2 to p2 to denote the quotient map also we can use this square bracket to denote the equivalence class of x where x is inside s2 the square x the bracket x will be inside p2 right note that if you take all points x1 x2 x3 inside x2 namely summation xi square equal to 1 suppose you put x1 is positive or x2 is positive or x3 is positive and so on so those are three coordinate neighborhoods okay each of them will map homeomorphically on to p2 because the moment one of the coordinate is positive when you take the action it will become negative that coordinate so the, those two will be disjoint so only one of them will be there so there is no identification inside that so that will project identically you know homeomorphically on to an open subset of p2 and everything x1 x2 x3 okay once you start with that one you can change the one of the signs and make it positive so it will be covered so these three things these three open subsets cover p2 entirely and they are each of them homeomorphic to an open subset of r2 okay because they are now part of the open subsets in s2 they are actually disks inside s2 so they are homeomorphic to some disks inside r2 also okay therefore p2 is a euclidean space is a locally euclidean space also see since s2 is uh, compact p2 will be also compact because it's a quotient right image of a compact set under a continuous map is a uh, is a compact that's also compact so compact and uh, well uh, you can immediately see that it is a uh, it is actually second countable also no problem but what is important here is to see that p2 is a hausdorff space then it will be a manifold right so for hausdorffness there is a general uh, thing you have studied under group action namely if you have finite group action on a on any hausdorff space the so action is fixed at point free and so on then then the quotient is automatically a hausdorff space in particular this action is just just to action x going to minus x you can immediately see that given any point x okay and minus x all right so you can separate them by this method now if you have two x comma y you can take the distance between x and y take half that distance and take balls of uh, radius smaller than that right and with this property inter uh, if all the all the coordinates are either positive or negative depending upon the starting points then you will get four different balls like this x minus x y minus y they are all disjoint so when you go down two of them will coincide two of them will get identified two of them will get identified so they will give you neighborhoods which are disjoint for bracket x and bracket y so that will show that this p2 is actually half star okay so you can directly verify it i have quoted a theorem also old theorem that you have done so this is a very nice uh, example of a somewhat non trivial uh, two dimension manifold okay so remember this this klein bottle is even actually more complicated than the projective space the torus is simpler okay you can see the image of them inside r3 R and so on and all of them are manifolds without boundary whereas this these two cylinder and this one which are much simpler objects in some sense they have boundary this has two boundary components and this has only one boundary component which is obviously a circle okay so so far all 
these examples are all uh, familiar objects to us the whole idea is to get to the theory slowly through the example so don't hesitate if you have any questions you can raise right now so i don't want to state much theorems here but try to give you glimpses what are the things happening here okay so i have given you explicitly how to get uh, the hostor nestance so on so schematically even s2 and p2 can be represented by some instead of rectangles you can just take some disk and identify some portions of the boundary so that is what i want to tell you here okay the check check that the quotient map q from s2 to p2 if you restrict it to just the upper half sphere all x1 x2 x3 such that x3 is greater than or equal to 0 okay so let us call this u3 bar instead of positive get greater than or equal to 0 then the entire thing below is covered because everything else is minus of that so you don't need that right minus of some point here we don't need that so if you just take u3 bar and then to restrict the quotient map that is such a quotient map therefore you can think of a p2 as a quotient of the upper hemisphere now the well, identification is occurring only on the boundary which is a circle contained inside r2 cross 0 right so what is the identification identification is again x going to minus x right but is performed only on the boundary okay so that is what uh, you have got okay that means what you have a disk the upper hemisphere is just like a disk and on the boundary you have an identification which i have shown like this the point x as it like moves minus x will move on this side like this okay if x is here minus x will be here x will be minus x will be here so this is the circle and on the boundary you have two arrows the boundary is divided into two parts this arrow this entire r is identified with this r by a homeomorphism namely x goes to minus x here so that will produce the projective space not very easy you can't perform that on the other hand look at this picture here again it's a circle and you have a disk here the identification is taking place like this as point moves like this its image will be moving like that that is the homeomorphism what is it it is just z going to z bar you can say or just x y going to x minus y not minus x minus y but x minus y sorry uh, here in this picture it will be x y going to minus x y so x coordinate is getting interchange does matter so this is another paper model you can say for the sphere and this is for the projective space right so everything is now uh, so i would like to uh, again this this if you take a paper it's not even uh, if it's difficult to imagine what you can do so this is just like a lady's purse which you uh, know snap purse okay you just close it up like that right so it's something like this you have seen the purse like that and then it's closing it up like that so it is that will give you a sphere representative of the sphere if you identify like this we have seen you know this we have seen logically you can't uh, see it uh, actually perform this is the projective space okay there are deeper reasons the projective space cannot be embedded inside r3 so you cannot have a model representing a, a projective space inside r3 okay so motivated by this experiment in a simple situation in this simple situation we now consider the following general process for obtaining compact surfaces with or without boundary anything which you want to perform it has to be the finite process so the compactness creeps in okay so you start with a piece of paper so it's compact so everything is compact now okay compact with or without boundary both of them will consider the mobius band and uh, cylinder etc are easy examples uh, right 
let us not uh, uh, exclude them let them be there okay so begin with a two disc that itself is a two dimensional surface okay it's a disc so it has a boundary so boundary is non empty so that is the starting point very nice now what we want it any homeomorphic copy we will also call it a disc okay it need not be inside r2 of course when you bend it and so on it will be at least inside r3 okay you don't have to go beyond that so let us fix an orientation on the boundary once for all the boundary is one single circle so for definiteness let us say counter clockwise sense that is the standard orientation okay next you select the finite number of points at least two of them so that the entire circle is cut off you know cut out you don't actually cut it but you just imagine you, you can just take so like if you have an interval cut it into n parts means what you are taking a partition right t not less than t1 less than t2 and so on so that less than less than less than is not possible in the circle but orientation will take place of this less than less than like that okay you can you can take points uh, say z1 z2 z3 and so on then you can call in uh, label them in a counter clockwise sense so these clockwise sense this labeling is unique up to a cyclic permutation why because you can start from any point and then you have to end before that uh, just when, when when you hit again that point you don't repeat that's all so that is the way you label the points right points which you have chosen on the circle okay let us call them as vertices and then the resulting arcs there we will call them edges this is just for convenience okay now label these arcs not the letters with letters not the vertices with letters and write them sequentially in a counter clockwise sense that's what i am doing okay so that is because you may start at any one of these while labeling then you will get a different labeling but that labeling will be just uh, differ by a cyclic permutation that's all so you are allowed now in the labeling you know same letter you can use at least at most twice okay at most twice you can repeat it once more that's all so a b c d and so on but the next one may be again a next one may be b now you should never use a and b okay you have to use different uh, letters and so on that's the way so at most twice so next look at a letter x which occurs twice in your labeling you have done it okay nobody else has told you so look at it and you have a freedom to put the script plus 1 or minus 1 okay plus 1 is as if you don't write right where the five when you write it is understood that it is plus 5 right but whereas minus 5 you write it similarly don't write the subscript minus 1 plus 1 okay if it is minus then you write it as minus 1 such as instead of just writing x in the second letter you may or may not okay you may write it as x inverse or you may write it as x also i will tell you why so these are the things that uh, you are permitted to do okay so when it occurs second time you can do it either you either you change uh, the uh, the letter to x inverse or you leave it as x that's all okay so here is an example one sequence consisting of two letters a a inverse another one just letter 2 a a the third one is a c a inverse d the, the fourth one here a c a d so here i have not i have repeated but i have not changed the the sign here right so the exponent is not changed similarly a b a inverse b inverse a b a b inverse now i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 of them right here right none of them is just imaginary things they all have occurred right now let me show you so here see this is a and that is coming this way so it's a inverse here it's a and it's repeated again a why i am repeating because i am going to identify this ah that is the whole purpose of 
repeating a letter okay let us look at the previous one look at this one this may be like can call it a i am not going to identify this one with this one so that will be b but this one i am going to identify so i will put this one as a but it is in the opposite direction now you see counter clockwise you have to follow but this arrow is in the opposite so i will put a a b a inverse and then what is this one this is b inverse so this is the torus here a b a b inverse so both of them have occurred there right so even these things these things have occurred a b a inverse what is this one this is some other letter this is not identified so a b a inverse c this you can say a is the other way around or maybe we can start this way whatever a inverse okay then b then what is this one is going see this is a inverse this is also coming so this is a inverse if this is the so better call this an a b again a and this one d no identification so all these things i have listed here the six of them okay so they are my starting examples e the examples a b this one this one i have redrawn them i don't need now any of these rectangle and shape and so on one single shape will do namely the disk itself so all of them are drawn on the disk now so this was first one a a inverse this will give you sphere this one a a inverse will you project your space sorry a a this one this is a inverse this will give you a c a inverse d this will give you what a a inverse being identified this will give you cylinder so this one will give you mobius band a c a d so c and d are left out but together what happens after identification they will give you one single circle here these two identified they will give two different circles on the boundary so this is now the torus and that is the klein bottle the schematic presentation of the six of the surfaces that we can access in some sense easily okay now let me try to generalize this kind of thing this is the preparation needed to perform the next step edge identification models paper or scheme models i have just chosen some scheme what i am going to do i am going to perform some identification how namely follow this instruction name whatever you have yes whenever an edge uh, edge is repeated identify those two edges how do i identify depending upon the exponent a a in the same way orientation you have to fix right in the beginning okay a if it a identify in that way a inverse identify the other way around so this is what you have to do okay so identify means what you have to use homeomorphism now this is where you have to tell that only orientation preserving or orientation reversing matter okay there are many homeomorphisms okay among us them orientation preserving some of them orientation uh, reversing some of them homeomorphism from one interval to another closed interval to another closed interval so the only thing that matters is whether it is orientation preserving or orientation reversing okay some edges are never identified in the scheme because they are not repeated so those things are called free edges so what will happen to them when you uh, when you perform all the identification those free edges will remain free so they will be the boundary they will be the boundary parts so this is what we want to see now okay let us see so it does not take much effort to see that the homeomorphism type of the quotient space only depends upon the isotopy class of the homeomorphisms used in the identification process 
So this is what I meant by those exercises 12.42, 43, 44, 45, whatever. I hope you had some time to spend it, even if you haven't solved them. What is the meaning of isotropy, etc., you must have understood by now. Okay. Since there are exactly two isotropy classes of homeomorphisms of edges, you can call them orientation preserving and orientation reversing. That there are only two classes like that. They have been encoded in the rubber sheet scheme by by what? By putting an exponent. Okay. So it follows that each rubber sheet scheme is defined defines a unique quotient space. So there is no ambiguity in the definition of a quotient space obtained by using a scheme. See, in other words, for all matters, the scheme represents the, the entire topology of the quotient space. So this is the underlying principle here. I am not proving any of these statements here, by the way. Huh? Okay, it, it does not take much effort to see that the homeomorphism type of portion space only depends upon the isotopy class. So I repeat just that, but I don't prove it. Now, why is the quotient obtained at two manifold? That is more serious. So that we should try to understand. Okay. Manifold with or without boundary. So I already told you the role of free edges. Free edges, at the most, the two endpoints may get identified because of the corresponding edges. Now, there are many edges, right? At each point, there are two edges. Even if this is not identified, the other one may be identified with something. So in that case, the endpoints may get identified. Okay, then it will become a circle. Okay, you can see that. The points, the, these points, one side is there, the surface, on the other side there is nothing. So you can see that it is actually a boundary point. Okay, we will we will make it more clear a little later. So clearly, since there is no identification at an interior point of the entire disk, take the interior point, there is no identification. So in a small neighborhood, that neighborhood will go injectively homeomorphically to a neighborhood of the corresponding point in the quotient space. Therefore, at all those points, our quotient space is locally Euclidean of dimension 2. Okay. So, now move to a point on the interior of an edge like this. This is an edge, but do not look at the vertices, look at an interior point of the edge. Okay. At that point, what happens? It is possible that this A is repeated elsewhere in the diagram. That means, this edge and this edge are getting identified. What happens? This half disk neighborhood here and half disk neighborhood here, okay, they will get identified only along the edge to give you a full disk. In the quotient space, the image of this point and this point, they are identified to a single point. That point becomes an interior point with an open neighborhood homeomorphic to an open disk inside R2. So therefore, these points are also, at these points also we have got the local Euclideanness. What is left out? Image of all these vertices. That is not very easy to see that. When you take the image of all these vertices, okay, a neighborhood of the quotient, in the quotient space, a neighborhood is homeomorphic to again a disk or it may be half disk, where this point is not identified with anything else. So, for example, this is not identified with anything else. It may be just half disk here, this entire thing like this. Okay. So, that is possible. But these are the only cases is what you have to see. I will skip the proof for that. But I will assure you that you do not have to put any more conditions. Okay, my paper scheme is well defined. It will always produce a manifold with boundary provided there are free edges. Otherwise, it will produce a manifold with without boundary. Sorry. All right.
so i want to tell you that do not perform any extra identifications of vertices on their own you know you are not supposed to just identify these two edges after doing all or before the identification of edges will come because i am identifying for example this edge with that edge this one of the uh, vertex will be identified with uh, one of the vertex here automatically that's all because identification is taking place on the closed edges not on open edges okay so that is the point here now i want to state something and this is a big big theorem actually now immediately a classical name for a rubber sheet scheme in which all edges are repeated is called a huh, canonical polygon everything is repeated i mean repeated only once right so a a a a a a inverse c c inverse or something like that no free edges are there that is the meaning of that such a thing will be called canonical polygon i have not much use for this uh, this terminology but i will use it because i am going to want to want to state something among us these canonical polygon there are certain there are some of them which are called reduced canonical polygon i will list them and the beauty is that list is so complete that it will represent all the compact surfaces compact connected surfaces with or without boundary okay sorry uh, without boundary because there are no free edges okay the floating free edges are all removed so only repeated things are there and i am going to list them the first one is a one single in this list there is only one one element it is a very typical element it's like it's like you have zero and so on right natural numbers and zero is something different so a a inverse you know what it is we have already done that a a inverse represents a sphere okay then there is a there is an infinite list here g inside n so indexed by natural numbers a1 b1 a1 inverse b1 inverse a2 b2 a2 inverse b2 inverse dot 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 ag bg ag inverse bg inverse so g inside n there is a definite uh, purpose denoting this number g by g okay this g is short for genus <laughs> okay so that is the standard name for this one all these things are going to be tori of genus g suppose i stop at 1 then i know that this is nothing but our standard torus so that torus is called torus with genus 1 okay you can call this one the first one as uh, torus with genus 0 but nobody uh, used that kind of terminology so these are all what are called as closed surfaces that means they are compact and without boundary okay and they are oriented orientable okay so this gives this list gives you all of them as g varies 1 2 3 4 indexed by the integer uh, positive integers oh natural number over the third one is again an infinite sequence again indexed by natural number but here i will use ordinary n here this is much simpler a1 a1 a2 a2 an an don't write a1 square a2 square that will be a funny straight funny representation so this is a sequence these are not uh, algebra here a1 a1 a2 a2 an an okay so as n varies you know the first one a1 a1 is nothing but the projective space okay so you may wonder where is the klein bottle it is neither here nor here no the story is that the klein bottle and all those non orientable surfaces are all hidden here so a1 a1 a2 a2 will represent the klein bottle you understand so in general what is happening 
if you don't use reduced canonical over here, several paper models, several rubber sheet models may represent the same surface. So, here the list is shortened and now the, the claim is that every member here is a distinct member of two actually homotopy types, actually homeomorphism type, actually diffeomorphism type. So, that is the strongest theorem here. Two of them will be different if they have been given different number here. First of all, list A, B, C, they are they themselves represent different homotopy types. Homotopy type is the strongest, no? If two things are not homotopic to each other, they will not be homeomorphic to each other. If they are not homeomorphic to each other, they will not be diffeomorphic to each other. Okay. So, this classification is very strong classification. Okay, up to homo up to homotopy type, they are different. All right, so that is the meaning of this one. So let us uh, stop here today. I will tell you a little more about how this these things actually to arrive and what how do they 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 look like, how the Klein bottle is hidden here. So those things I will try to tell you next time. Thank you.